I had been running basically for the lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. and uh, I toured the state making speeches mm -hmm. ostensibly for the office of lieutenant governor. I became aware of the fact that everywhere I went, people were urging me to run for governor. They were neither satisfied with Marvin nor with Gall and Bird, who were the two major candidates at that point running for governor. So I guess it probably was about the uh, uh, oh, summer before the, uh, the campaign uh, got in the way. Uh, I remember that uh, there was a lot that was a great deal, probably the summer of 61, I guess. Uh, of, yeah. Because there were a lot of people, but also not only was I finding that true, but then I was also finding that some of my would-be opponents in the lieutenant governor's race were trying to continue that race by getting people with the same name to get in the race with me and all that. Mm -hmm. I just decided that mm -hmm. I was going to go for broke, which is probably as good a chance as any to go for broke, because Marvin wasn't, wasn't excitement and Garland Bird wasn't so. Uh, your uh, career, though, prior to that was, uh, oh, what we call a skyrocket, but it rose rather rapidly. Uh, it was very unusual for someone to occupy the senatorial position in those days uh, consecutively. Yeah, I had done that, and I had been the floor leader, and I had been the president pro tem. So mm -hmm. I mean, I had a I had a pretty fair base on which mm -hmm. to uh, operate from. I was not a totally unknown quantity, and I had uh, done what all politicians successful at times do, and that is, I planted seeds. Uh, throughout the state uh, expecting to make a race mm -hmm. uh, one day for a governor. Mm -hmm. I just made it quicker than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, particular individual or individuals influenced you the most in reaching a final conclusion in that matter? There really weren't uh, that many individuals that influenced me as much as there were just numerous people. I didn't have any political mentor. In fact, I was a right ironic and right unusual. I, I got into that government race with very little uh, what you would normally call professional political support. Uh, the fellow who I guess that had, uh, I was fairly close to at that point would have been uh, the present uh, governor who was Vandiver. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vandiver had pretty well pledged himself to support Garland Bird, so mm -hmm. he wasn't interested in me running. He thought that by me getting in the race, mm -hmm. that all I was going to do was muddy the water up and uh, keep Bird from getting elected, and he didn't want Marvin Griffin elected mm -hmm. under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I got in even without his blessings. Mm -hmm. I had no real blessings of some, say, a Jim Gillis or. Uh -huh some individual of that kind of stature. I had a lot of uh, a lot of friends, a lot of uh, people in the legislature, and people that I'd gone to school with, and people of that guilt and that mm -hmm. kind of a... Did you use stature. polls in those days or not? No, we did use a poll, but only after I got in the governor's race. Mm -hmm. I had no poll up until uh, I got in the governor's race. And yes, we took, we were one of the first uh, to use one of Lou Harris's mm -hmm. first polls. Mm -hmm. And of course, I never believed it. I mean, polls were new, mm -hmm. and his poll, uh, of course, when I got in it, showed me uh, having a very positive uh, profile, mm -hmm. and Marvin having a very negative profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It showed me, though, with a tremendous uh, recognition problem. Mm -hmm. But as the summer went on, the polls got better. But I wouldn't believe them. I kept saying, mm -hmm. you know, the polls have got to be wrong. And finally, they, CBS, uh, it was sent down about a week before the final election and started filming it. Mm -hmm. And they had a film on the uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I said, you know, you fellas, I don't know what you're doing because I don't know whether I'm going to win this thing or not and you're all just mm -hmm. wasting your time for as I'm concerned. And they said, oh no, we think you're going to win, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I won it pretty well the way the poll predicted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I began to have a little more confidence in polls. However, they changed in 1970. I had polls running all directions, and then they changed very dramatically otherwise. So polling was a very sort of a new innovation in the political field at that time, political poll. I uh, wonder, at what time 
did you really feel that you were going to win? You were going to actually beat Marvin talking about the runoff. The right? night that I sat in the hotel and I finally got 100,000 votes ahead of Marvin. Mm -hmm. And that's when I agreed to come out of the hotel room and make a declaration that I was winning the election. Mm -hmm. But up until that night, and until I felt like I was at least 100,000 votes in front of him, mm -hmm. I never once at that point ever felt like that I was really going to win. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a tough race, and he was a, he was a tough campaigner, and uh, uh, I worked, I probably outworked him, just as I'm sure I got to probably outworked in other elections, but at that point I was... 36 years old, and he was in his early 50s, I think it was, and uh, I kept going night and day, night and day with one philosophy, and that is I made up my mind that I would be able to look myself in the mirror after the race was over and say, look, I did everything I could have done. I didn't, uh, you know, if I got beat, I got, it wasn't because I hadn't worked at it. And I went religiously around the clock, and I think, I don't think he could do that. In fact, I know he did. I know, uh, and things got so tough and got so strenuous at certain points. I would hear from time to time, well, Governor Griffin had been unable to make a, an appearance here, make an appearance there, and he wasn't feeling good or something like that. And I'm sure it was just a matter of sheer fatigue because I damn near killed myself. Oh. At, at that age, at this point, it's I can see now where well, he probably was uh, just not able to make that kind of thing. You know, a lot of uh, elections that have been held traditionally in the South, and Georgia's for that matter also, have been notorious for a lack of issues. Do you remember any particular issue? Well, the main that issue that now of that election was the question of, of his uh, administration and mm -hmm. the so-called quote-unquote corruption mm -hmm. that surrounded the administration. Now, they had... Uh, you say, so far as Marvin Griffin personally was concerned, uh, you know, there was not any, uh, I've never felt, I feel, feel like now, that he is basically and fundamentally, he's a good man and he, he served the state well. Mm -hmm. But to his administration and some of the people that were in his administration, uh, unquestionably, painted it mm -hmm. and caused him all kinds of problems. We either digest it, written an article, never had so mm -hmm. many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm gotten so much out of one administration mm -hmm. uh, there have been all kinds of investigations. In fact, uh, I had been on the so-called Select Senate Watchdog Committee, which in turn went into some of the rural road uh, uh, program, mm -hmm. which was really one of his great <laughs> programs. Yeah. And it got to be a political football. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, uh, you know, that was even, uh, that was back, to, uh, that was a that was the fight there that, that, that won the election mm -hmm. for Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. When uh, Marvin's candidate was uh, old uh, Reverend Bodenhouse, uh, and a to it. Uh -huh. Do you feel that uh, definitely then the charges of corruption certainly worked in your favor? Worked in my favor, no question about it. How about the other things like uh, taxes, for example? There was quite a bit of talk about raising taxes. Well, there was, and he, he you know, said he was not going to raise them, and I said I would not raise them. Mm -hmm. And then I pulled out a little thing where he had raised them after mm -hmm. he said he wasn't going to raise them. Uh, uh, he uh, voted for them in some other mm -hmm. earlier time, and we had a little round about that. Mm -hmm. But the issue of uh, uh, so-called corruption, honesty in government was a, was a big issue, and then I guess the natural issue was that uh, I was a new, new face on the scene. I was a young legislator, and he was uh, the old pro, and he's been there before. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of issue mm -hmm. that all politicians run into in this state as you try to, uh, you know, go back into the business. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, they were a uh, tough thing to do. Looking over literature, there was quite a number of, uh, of uh, statements that were made as there are in any campaign uh, and those, a lot of them dealt with your alleged association with Martin Luther King, uh, Mr. That Lane. Was, that was Marvin's. Uh, uh -huh. They tried to hang uh, Martin Luther King and uh -huh. uh, Black Satchel Carl, I believe they yeah, referred to. Yeah, Mills Lane. <laughs> Mills Lane uh, uh, Reg Murphy <laughs> had offered me uh, to support me. Uh -huh. He was this Atlanta banker. Uh -huh. 
And that worried me. Frankly, I've never really been confronted with that kind of a chart. Never had been in a statewide race. And I used to wonder, you know, how badly that was hurt. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they did, uh, you know, they used the race issue, and it, I think it backfired on me. Uh -huh. Because I won the race in the, in the final analysis. I won the race popular vote-wide. I wanted it to count the county unit vote-wide. Mm -hmm. I wanted it without the black vote whatsoever. I still want it. I mm -hmm. won the majority of the white vote, and I won practically all of the black vote. Mm -hmm. So I beat uh, Governor Griffin every way you could, you could beat him at. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I read in one of the issues in June of 62 that you said you had never met Martin Luther King. Uh -huh. Junior or senior, and I was just curious if that were indeed true. That mm -hmm. was true at that time. I really had. That was just an albatross they tried to uh, put on around my neck. Yeah, I was just. I um, the uh, the uh, county unit system. How did you basically feel about that? Uh, well, regardless of what turned out. You know, I, when I went in the race, the county unit system was a controlling factor. I felt like naturally that I, I still felt like I could win it. County unit wise, and I won it county unit wise. But in the course of the race, within a month or two later, the Supreme Court threw the county unit system out and put um, it on a popular vote basis. So, uh, if I had been worried about the county unit thing, I never would have qualified. But I qualified, knowing that I probably would have to run. I, I knew then I had to run it under the county unit rules. Well, uh, you know, suppose, of course, again, the statistics would reveal that you would have won anyway. But how did you, as a Georgia uh, politician say in the state legislature all along during the early part of your career feel about the county unit system. Did you, did you really honestly feel it was a good system? Well, I don't know what I know. I don't think I felt it was a good system, but I felt like it was a system that up until that point had been to the Supreme Court two or three times and the Supreme mm -hmm. Court of the United States had upheld it. Mm -hmm. So frankly, I didn't have much choice as to how I felt about it. It was a question at that point. It was a law of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, kind of hard to explain to somebody who hadn't looked at it very well. Mm -hmm. you know, very hard to explain to anybody, but the Supreme Court of the United States, right. until that particular time, took the position that they had no right to interfere with the state uh, political mm -hmm. problems. And as they, quote, I remember they said, uh, we're not going to get into that quote unquote political thicket. Uh, that was a part of their opinion. Now you beat Marvin by 160 odd thousand votes, yeah. very handily. Uh, how do you account, uh, if indeed you could uh, be viewed as a moderate, let's say, and Marvin as a conservative, reactionary, whatever labels that you want to pin on each other, how do you account for that overwhelming victory as opposed to his overwhelming victory of uh, 1954? Uh, a, a great deal happened in Georgia politics, apparently, in that short period. What? Well, that was back, uh, that was the beginning of the 60s, where Jack Kennedy had just mm -hmm. been elected president of the United States of America. It was sort of a, the era of the, uh, the young uh, moderates. Mm -hmm. uh, I happened to be one of the first young uh, candidates for governor in a deep southern state. I think people were just sort of uh, the aura of uh, mm -hmm. youth and the idea of having somebody who would at least be a middle of the road rather than a, uh, a reactionary was an appealing thing. I had previously gone around the state uh, uh, the year before and had taken what was a right unheard of position at that time when we had the problem of closed the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my position was that we should not close down the University mm -hmm. of Georgia, uh, although that the Supreme Court ruled that they had to put a black in over there. Mm -hmm. Marvin and uh, some of his supporters, you know, were pretty much at that point. The people like Roy Harris mm -hmm. and some of the others were. Mm -hmm. So that's a political matter. Mm -hmm. We ought to shut down the university mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, not, not as long as I have anything to say about it. I will not mm -hmm. ever support that. I think people at that point were beginning to realize that we were in a transitional period and that the, the issues were, were tremendously uh, uh, sensitive and also fantastically important, and that uh, people who uh, contended uh, uh, that they ought to do things like shut down the university system of Georgia uh, were just living in the dark mm -hmm. ages. Mm -hmm. One of the things I remember Marvin saying in that campaign was that if he was elected, he'd put Martin Luther King so far back in a, in a uh, 
jail or a cell, they take a blackjack sapling. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will reach him and get him out. <laughs> and I took the word blackjack sapling right. and started using it. People thought what he really meant, he was going to hit him with a blackjack. Right. 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 Which was not true, but that uh -huh. was his descriptive term. Uh -huh. And of course, that was the position he was taking. And he'd take Martin Luther King uh -huh. and all these other robber rousers and he would exterminate uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he he made a statement, I think, that he couldn't run the governor's office from the jail cell, but he wasn't quite willing to go there himself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it came right. to that. But I think uh, you were uh, quoted as making the statement that you were a segregationist uh, uh, during I, the campaign. I think I was or not an integrationist. I said I was. I, that's right. That I was. I was not an integrationist, but I understood what the law of the land meant, uh -huh. and that I would uphold the law. Uh -huh. And although I felt at that point, like everybody else in the South, that uh, people wanted to uh, segregate themselves, they had a right to do so. Uh -huh. But if that was in that was in violation of the law of the land, and we had to implement the law and then let people decide, you know, uh, what they could do in their own private uh, ways without it becoming a violation of the law. And that's what I really said, and that's what I, you know, what I meant. Uh, is it my understanding that uh, you and Roy Harris used to at one time uh, be more or less political allies and you split Later Not on. really. Roy Harris, uh, no, no, Roy Harris and I were never allies. In fact, uh, uh, we, we were friends and we got along all right, but I never really ever had Roy Harris' support. Uh, even in my early campaigns in Augusta, Roy Harris was on the other side. Uh -huh. uh, but we were friends as lawyers, and I mean, I liked Roy Harris. At least I knew one thing, Roy Harris, if he told you something, and you could generally count on what he said, and which is a, a great thing in the political world. Because a man, you know, there are politicians who you know when they tell you something won't do what they say, and there are those that you know when they tell you something they will do. Mm -hmm. I respected Roy Harris, I just didn't agree with any of his political positions. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that strikes me is that roughly between uh, 54 and 62, uh, and especially 62 itself, there were a lot of issues that shook the foundations of uh, the social foundations of, say, Georgia. The almost the institutions of this state were all involved. Uh, well, you got the integration issue, you got the prayer in the school issue, you had during the campaign itself uh, race trouble in Albany, for right. example, right. and a lot of things that, that would, would lead one to conclude superficially that Georgians would have reacted differently. Yet, instead, they elect by an overwhelming a uh, young, majority. moderate go. Right. Uh, and I find it very difficult to, to reconcile. That was just, you know, I was I was saying the right thing at the right time, and I think it, uh, it caught the fancy of the people, and I, I carried out just what I told them I, I would do, and we had a very fine administration. What method of campaigning did you find most successful? Well, I... Uh, I found then I probably used the television media much better than Marvin did. Mm -hmm. uh, Marvin was a very fine, and still is, one mm -hmm. of the most colorful stump speeches you could find. And he can tell a story as well as any man I've ever heard, a political story. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy listening to it. Right. But, uh, and I, I, but when you put him on television and you, you uh, put him on that media and he comes across like an evangelistic uh, mm -hmm. preacher or one of these uh, stuff politicians, it just uh -huh. doesn't, it doesn't sell. Uh -huh. So I found then that my best media at that point was uh, the TV and, of course, uh, radio. And uh, I enjoyed the campaign on the stuff thing, too, but I, I felt like that he had a better advantage in that particular uh, type of campaign, and I had a better advantage uh, in the other. Um, the... Uh, the question that's bothered me personally for some time is that the South uh, has had several in recent years, uh, last 10, 20 years, what you might label loosely as the bright young politician, bright young man, governors by and large, yourself, example, Leroy Collins and others, uh, whose administrations have uh, not been rocked by any particular degree of scandal that have something uh, tangible to show by way of accomplishment and a positive thrust. Yet, in turn, uh, they very seldom get a shot at the national vice presidency or the presidency. 
And yeah. now we wind up with Carter uh, with a right It's a different, it's a different uh, point. era. Well, I guess Watergate, uh, a lot of things that have intervened on the national level that were not uh, prevalent or did not exist when we were there. Uh, and I think that uh, it's been said that after Watergate and some of these other things, that really the people, uh, I guess, are uh, looking more to anti-Washington or uh, outside of Washington, then they are, they've lost so much confidence and faith and, and uh, feeling that the people in Washington are really the ones that are doing the right thing. They're skeptical, they're cynical, they're very much uh, disenchanted mm -hmm. with that. So Carter comes along, plus uh, uh, he has an opportunity that we didn't have with the new financing that the federal government set up. He can raise funds and get the government to match them, and he can go out and mount a campaign on a national level that heretofore was not possible. Uh, how do you feel about uh, using that same kind of thing uh, on the state level, campaign uh, expenditures? Well, we funds. talked about it. I don't know whether the state could ever afford to do it. It takes a lot of money to run for governor. The state, uh, you know, might be able to uh, allow this check-off business that they mm -hmm. do on in Washington to raise mm -hmm. some campaign funds. Uh, I don't have any great objection to it. Uh, I think it might do the same thing on state level. It would allow a lot of people who probably were absolutely not qualified just to get in the race and get some state funds and go around and have a forum to talk mm -hmm. about the particular position, like the woman who's running on the abortion issue. She's mm -hmm. gotten to $300,000 mm -hmm. in federal funds just to make that race. Mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed in talking to uh, former uh, governors, congressmen, and so forth, that during the course of conversations, uh, after all is said and done, I'm left with an image that these people did a lot of things they didn't want to do in regard to such things as race and civil rights bills and that kind of thing. In short, they're pretty darn moderate and often fairly liberal. Uh, I guess you might call them closet liberals. But in order to get, what I'm talking for example, to get reelected, he had to, you know, vote in favor of and against certain other things, even though his ticker told him otherwise. Do you find in your c connections, uh, in general terms, this is true? No, I find that you do a lot of things sometimes that uh, later prove to be uh, maybe more, much more popular or prove to be uh, much more acceptable at the time that you were wrestling with what you had to do. Uh, but I never felt like that I ever tried to take deliberate positions just because I felt like it was going to make me popular with the people at the time. To the contrary, I went ahead and took a lot of positions that didn't necessarily at that point appear to be the popular thing to do. Later they proved to be the right thing, and then, then I probably got some credit for having done them. But I was never one that, uh, you know, like George Wallace and mm -hmm. others who said, look, I ran once and I got beat, and they, I ran as a liberal or moderate, and the next time they're not going to have saved me. Mm -hmm. I could never live with myself, and I don't believe that most politicians could, if I felt like that everything I was doing was an artificial response, and it was not something that I genuinely felt like was the right thing to do. So mm -hmm. I tried to do what I felt like was right, no matter how it appeared to come out at the particular time. Uh, sometimes I was applauded for it at the time that I was criticized. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest mistake you felt you made during your administration? During my first administration? Mm -hmm. I don't think I made any great mistakes during my first administration. I had a very, very successful administration and everything that I attempted to do. I rewrote the Constitution and didn't get it put on the ballot. But that was not my fault. It called to the federal court who wouldn't put it on. Mm -hmm. But we accomplished everything that I said I'd do in my campaign and did more than that. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like from the standpoint of mistakes that I, that I really made any, any major mistakes. Or I made a lot of mistakes every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, nothing of any uh, crucial nature. I think the second time I ran for governor, the mistake I was was trying to run on issues and felt like the people were willing to accept the record and, and willing to abide by a campaign that's an issue to be presented. And in fact, I realize now you either got to go to the people at the lowest common denominator and stick to those simple gut things or you lose about 90% of it. That was the mistake I made there. The, uh, 
uh, campaign was, as you indicated, in 62, very hard fought. Hard and, fought. Uh, how would you classify the propaganda or the salesmanship uh, during that of your opponent? The car cartoons, the caricatures, the, the okay. main image that they tried to cast you in and, and all. I felt like it was, you know, at that point, they hurt me. I was, uh, I was in the first statewide race. Uh, I used to get upset over them, but I tried to never show that. I felt like they were unfair. Roy Harris was putting out his scandal uh -huh. sheet every week, and he'd write stories in there that were totally uh, unrepresentative and mis- misstatements uh, and things. As you pointed out, you know, they tried to cast me in the, in the position of being the one uh, in the common vernacular, as they called it back in those days, that I was a quote-unquote nigger lover mm -hmm. and uh, they were not. And I was, uh, you know, all of those things. And uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a very nice race. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, it was a hard-fought bitter mm -hmm. race. Uh, but I won, and once you win, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I've found in life is man doesn't have much memory for pain. Right. And once the pain is over, you know, you can't uh, you forget about it. Right. Uh, the, uh, there were a couple of my, uh, again, just trying to read my personal feelings out, but some of them were pretty low blows, <laughs> I felt. Uh, I just wondered what, uh, how your reaction uh, was. Uh, my wife even came home a couple of times and said, you know, people down in my part of the country, she was down in state first, mm -hmm. they don't believe all that stuff. And uh -huh. she said, why don't you do something about it? And I said, well, what do you think I can do about it? I mean, yeah. I can't, you know, I'm every day I'm uh -huh. denying and, and taking a different position, but I said, nothing I can do about it. Did you want Marvin's support in 1970? No. He endorsed Carter, and I endorsed him early. I never even talked to Marvin. Mm -hmm. I think he told me here not so long ago that was the biggest mistake he ever yeah, made. Yeah, that's what he said, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have anything else uh, that I'd uh, like to ask. Uh, I will say that... Uh